All right, so we're on the tail end now of matrices. So this is essentially the last chapter we're going to be covering, but there's three parts to it. So we're breaking it up so it's not, a, it's not too much for you guys. We'll just go through one section at a time and then we'll see how far we get. But this is 12C part one. Okay, so this is now going to be pulling knowledge of what you learned with your networks. So you remember the dots and the lines, okay? As well as multiplying your matrices together, um, as well as understanding how per percentages work, okay? Like, let's say, for example, Zayd, I'm asking you a question, all right? If I have 60% of your food, how much of your food do you have? 40%, okay, cool. So you've got to understand that concept of like, you know, your percentages have to add up to 100%, okay? Um, now, when it comes to networks and what we learned about this, a lot of the times we worked with diagrams, okay? Well, let's say you had two dots and they were connected to each other. Okay, I'll make another dot. Okay. Okay, those are, these are what we call, you need a bi-directional networks, yeah? Because you can go either way. But now we're going to work with networks where there's only one single direction. So you might have a graph, okay, where it's only like that, where you can only go one way. So for example, if I call this A, B, and C, okay, Fahad, can B communicate to A directly? No. Why not? Unless there was an error, correct. So if there was another error there, it would, but it can't. A can connect to or could communicate to B, but it can't go back, okay? And C can't communicate to A, for example, in this case. Yeah, so just understand that there's going to be arrows with these networks. Okay, so let's read this. Consider a situation where a collection of objects are distributed amongst various categories. Each time the situation changes, a fixed proportion of the object or category is redistributed among categories. Now, what that's saying is, oh, let me think of an example. If, for example, today, okay, um, all of you guys, okay, decide on what junk food you want to eat tonight, okay, you've got only three options, okay, let's say you've got Mickey D's, you've got KFC's, and what's another food that you all like? Hungry Jacks, all right? Let's just go with those options. Now, hands up if, you, if you're into your McDonald's. Only one person. Only one person I like. Two people, okay? Let's say we have 20 people here. So that's about 10%. Uh, let's go 5% of people here. <coughs> like Mickey D's, okay? Who else? What about KFC? Who likes KFC? <coughs> I'm going to put... Oh, my gosh. Tegan put herself twice. Okay. So there's four people, well, let's go 10%, for example, all right. And then who likes Hungry Jacks? I'm just going to assume everyone else likes it. Oh my gosh, okay. No, that's fine. Thanks, Tegan. Uh, now, remember the thing I asked Zaid before? Okay, five, I've got, uh, I had 60% of the food. That means he's got 40% of it. This is five, this is 10. So what's the remainder here? That, and it should have to add up to 100% here, yeah? So it should be 85%. <coughs> now, this doesn't connect fully to what we're talking about, but let's say, for example, today, okay, I, I go to McDonald's, okay, and 5% of you guys are, are like McDonald's, right? Uh, if I was to go back again tomorrow, okay, according to how I would read this, there's a 5% chance that I would go back to McDonald's. Or, or tomorrow, I would, there would be a 10% chance I'd go back to McDonald's. Or tomorrow, there'd be a 85% chance I'd go back to McDonald's. Uh, HJs. Now, this is probably not the best example, but another one I can think of is like your weather. Okay, your weather changes every every day. Yeah? So, for example, if it was raining today, what's the chance of it raining again tomorrow? Okay, or what's the chance of it being sunny again tomorrow or being uh, windy tomorrow? Okay, every day the situation is going to change. Yeah, based on percentages. All right, so. Let's just go to this and see if it, uh, so I'll try and make more sense of it. A transition matrix. So this is what you call a matrix, okay, where there's a transition in numbers. So say, for example, okay, it represents here a system of change from one state to another. A, okay, look at, look at A. From A to A, what is the percentage of A going back to A, according to this matrix? 80%, okay, so from A... To A, there's an 80% of chance of it happening. What about A to B? 20%, okay? That's how, exactly how we read it. 
What about from B to itself? So B to B would be 60%, okay? And then B to A would be 40%. Now, what do you guys notice about the percentages? So A, the A percentages. So A to itself and A to elsewhere. What does it add up to? Always adds up to 100. And what about the B percentages? So B to itself and B to elsewhere, it always adds up to 100%. Okay, so the way this works is every time we change, this, uh, every time we uh, do some sort of communication matrix or something like that, there's going to be a percentage of a change. Okay, so we need to be able to represent this into our matrix as well. Well, not quite. That's not technically how we would read it. Okay, but thank you for that uh, observation. There's a, a specific way we read a transition matrix when you're going from one to the other. Okay, we'll get to that. For now, just understand that the numbers equate to 100%. Okay? All right, so when we put this in a matrix, okay, here it is. A, B, uh, A and B, yeah? So you've got two dots, which means when you put it in a matrix, you're going to have two rows and two columns. That's a square matrix. Okay? And then you've got A, B, A, B. Now, I remember mentioning a while back, whenever you read a matrix like this, you got to make sure you read the labels properly because this is saying current and that says next. So what does that mean? Okay? So what that's saying is basically the way you're supposed to read this matrix is you're going to go from this, uh, this column to this row. So this is saying A to A. So from A to A, which is here. This number here would be from A to B. Okay, that's what that represents. So you don't actually read it as B to A. Okay, because it's current to next, you've got to read it that way. So you start here. So always start with this top bit and then go to wherever the next is. You've got to watch out for that because I've seen other matrices where it's the other way around. Where it does say, for example, current here and then next up here. It's got A, B. Okay. Got to make sure you watch out for the labels when you read these matrices. So in this case, when we read this matrix, it's from the top to the side. Okay. When you do these. All right. Um, and it's pretty straightforward when it, when it comes to putting this into a, a matrix. Okay. You just got to make sure you look at the percentages when you put the numbers in. Okay. So let's look, look for example. From A to itself, A to A, so A to A here would be 0 0.8. A to B, okay, would be 0 0.2, okay. B to A, okay, would be 0 0.4, and then B to itself is 0 0.6, so B to B would be 0 0.6. Notice how the columns always add up to 100, okay. The columns must always add to 100. But the rows, they don't have to add up to 100 when you do this. Okay, so it's always the columns that add up to 100 when you do these matrices. All right, let's try and do this. So, let's look at this example. A weather forecaster classifies temperatures as cold, moderate, or hot. The chance that the next day will have a certain temperature, given the current day's temperature is shown below. So, this is sort of the example I was trying to get across in that every single day there's a percentage change or there's a certain percentage that something's going to happen. Okay, so what we need to do in this diagram is we need to fill in these boxes and figure out what the percentages are. Okay, now before we go and do that, remember back in this matrix, everything from A, so if you start at A and you go from A, it always has to add up to 100%. So if you look at this matrix here, if you're starting with, let's say, for example, at cold, so C, okay, and you need to fill in the boxes. So from C to itself, that's 45. C to, uh, C to M is 50%. Okay. What about C to H? So if we've already got 45 and 50%, what's remaining? 5%. So that means C to H should be 5%. Okay, what about M? Okay, remember, it always has to add up to 100%. M to itself is 
M to H is 15%. So you're already at 85%. What about M to C? Okay, it would be 15%. Yes, Hakan. For the stoppage there, yep. if we've got a question like that, is it always going to have at least one of the numbers there? Yes. Or, so it's never going to have like no numbers there, is it? Sometimes you'll have to fill it in, but other times um, it'll be like this. Well, it'll be all complete. If there is no numbers there, yep. is there... No, it will actually make sense. Like you'll find that it all all the and all the numbers should add up, is what I'm saying. Okay. And I'll show you another way of doing this because this one is a little bit complicated. It's a lot easier when you do it on a matrix. Let's just do the last one. Okay. H to C is already five. H to M is sixty percent. So that's already sixty-five percent. So H to itself should be how much? Thirty-five percent. The remainder. Okay, so there is the diagram for this network. Now we need to transform this into a matrix. So let's do that. So notice there's one, two, three nodes. So that means there's going to be a three by three matrix. Give yourself space to this for this. So we'll call it cold, medium, hot. C. Okay, so remember, it's going to be, what did I put here? Current, so you have to make sure you read it from current and then next. So you're reading it that way, okay? C to C, M to C, okay? H to C. All right, so let's do this. C to C, I can see it's 45%. Now, one thing is, when you put this into a matrix, you have to represent it as a decimal, so you don't put 45%, you put 0.45. M to C, I can see is 15%. So 0.15. And then H to C is 5%. So 0.05. Remember, the rows don't have to add up to 100. It's only the columns. Okay, let's do... C to M. So C to M, I can see, is 50%. So 0 0.5. M to itself, so M to M, is 70%. And then H to M, I can see is... Uh, ooh, numbers went a bit crazy there. Oh, this last one, guys. 15.5. I kind of remember. 35, I think it was. Okay, where were we? Um, H to M. So there is 60%. So 0 0.60. Okay, the cool thing is, you can actually now fill in the rest of this. Okay, remember the columns always have to add up to 100. So I don't need to look at that diagram anymore, but you can if you want to. So let's say, for example, Jordan. If I wanted to put a number here, what would it be? Remember, it ha always has to add up to 100%. So if you've already got 45 and 50, you've got 95 altogether, yeah? So what's left? 5%. Five. Five so that would be 0 0.05. Good. All right. Rocco, I've got 15% and 70%. So what's remaining? Another 15. So 0 0.15. And then for the last one, uh, let's see, Ryan. Ryan. Okay, I've got 5% and then 60%, so that's 65%. What's remaining? So you shoot 35, so 0 0.35. And see how I didn't need all the numbers, I just needed enough to be able to calculate that all of this should add up to 100%. Right, and that's how basically we make a transition matrix. So this represents all the movement that's happening in this matrix here. Okay. And that's basically it for 12C part one. So what I'll get you guys to do is do these four networks.